One year ago, Intel announced its vision for Teraflops Computing. And because we realize that the road to Teraflops is a journey no company can make alone, we've been very busy over the last year, forming key collaborations and listening to our customers. Now we'd like to share with you some of the results. We'll meet some of the more than 30 customers who have already ordered Paragon supercomputers. We'll find out from them what factors influence that choice and hear about some of the applications they'll be moving to their Paragons. And we'll get a close-up, hands-on look at Paragon's unique software, a set of tools that make Paragon the most significant system in the history of scalable high-performance computing. But first, let's take a look at some of the things that have happened in the last year. January, Intel and DARPA announced jointly funded research to accelerate the development of systems capable of sustained teraflops performance. February, ESDC is established, and Intel demonstrates HPCC technology to members of Congress. March, Edward A. Macy, former Executive Vice President of Cray Research, joins Intel's Supercomputer Systems Division as General Manager and a Corporate Intel Vice President. April, Intel and Digital Equipment Corporation join forces to create software for massively parallel supercomputers. An industry analyst rank Intel number one in MPP market share. May, Intel and Digital announce that Digital will become an OEM partner of Intel's Supercomputer Systems Division. June, the finalists for the prestigious Gordon Bell Award are announced. Three of the five are Intel supercomputer users. And Intel and the concurrent supercomputing consortium celebrate a year's worth of real work done on the Intel Touchstone Delta the world's fastest production supercomputer. We're actually computing on the Delta machine a simulated flight over a region of the surface of Venus. We wanted to develop tools that we could really use to do our real research, which is on the nervous system. We're modeling piezoelectric crystals. Uh, these crystals are used in cellular phones, pagers, all sorts of electrical devices at Motorola. The main the focus of our lab is to do research involving simulation and modeling of macromolecules for problems of biomedical interest. Our ultimate goal is to develop plant models many times faster than those in use today. My system of interest is the olfactory system, um, the sense of smell. The digital images were taken during the July 11th partial eclipse of the sun. What we're trying to do is attack the problem of how to design and manufacture circuits by means of computer simulation. The particular application that we're interested in solving on the Delta involves uh, modeling the vortices and vortex configurations and vortex structures of type two superconductors. What we're trying to accomplish with the Delta is to uh, understand where galaxies and clusters of galaxies and, and voids that are devoid of galaxies come from. It's about as hard as I thought it would be. I pretty much wrote the neural network inside of a week. I search my trees, I drink my jolt. July, SuperQuest. In cooperation with the National Science Foundation, high school students get hands-on experience on an Intel supercomputer. They find that parallel machines are surprisingly easy to use. Supercomputers are most awesome. August, Intel gears up to meet the demand for Paragon. The Supercomputer Manufacturing Center is expanded to assemble and test up to 52 systems simultaneously. I have here a nice bottle of uh, Paragon Champagne. September, Intel ships the first Paragon, a Model 35 rated at 38 gigaflops to Oak Ridge National Laboratories. Right October, Intel names Wendy Vittori to head its expanded European operation. November, Lockheed solves a breakthrough dense matrix problem. Oak Ridge celebrates the installation of its Paragon, and Sandia signs up to buy one. And today, with the first Paragons installed and with over 30 orders on the books, we've already had positive feedback from our customer base. Let's call on Paragon's chief architect, Intel's Justin Ratner. When I'm, I'm uh, talking to people about, about the Paragon XPS system, uh, I feel like the fellow in the spaghetti sauce ad uh, who always uh, answers the question with the comment, it's in there. Uh, but Paragon really is uh, that kind of a system, and, and that's what makes it fun to talk about. 
that when users ask uh, about uh, operating system features, uh, multi-user features, uh, I can say it's in there. When they ask about hardware features, uh, high-performance interconnect, uh, high-performance uh, message passing, high-performance CPUs, I can say it's in there. Uh, and it's hard to find things uh, that, that people think are important in high performance systems that aren't in the Paragon. And so even if I have to sound a little like a spaghetti sauce salesman, it makes me, it makes me feel good to talk about the system. Many of the present features of the Paragon reflect the fact that Intel has responded very, very well to concerns or issues which arose either in using earlier systems or in discussions about the potential procurement of the Paragon system. The decision to go towards a Paragon uh, and in commit towards uh, purchasing a Paragon uh, is, is really based on the track record that we've had with Intel thus far. What we found with, uh, with Intel and the new parallel technology that they offered was that this was not an experiment for them. They made commercial computers. They provided service and support of the type that a commercial institution or a commercial entity such as ourselves expected. Paragon's solid design and solid hardware and solid operating system dictates our choice of the machine. By teaming with Intel and being the recipient of the Paragon 150, puts us in a very favorable position to try to compete and improve computational capabilities. Intel has uh, the architecture that we think uh, will be very appropriate for the applications we have. They have the off-the-shelf computer components that allow them to take advantage of new technology very rapidly. Their schedule was, uh, was right and the track record was right. I don't think uh, anything can be more gratifying to uh, an architect or a designer than um, his clientele uh, telling him or her that they've done a good job, they've done the right things, and that uh, people literally can't wait to get their hands on the system. What collaboration does for us at Intel is it grounds us in the reality of the users. We now have applications and, and the understanding of the applications the user are making for our architecture, we have understanding of the tools they want to have and the tools we need to supply for the users. Let's hear from some of those users now. And we'll use this as an opportunity to demonstrate some of the features we incorporated into the Paragon to address the concerns of our customers. Our major concern for the Dusty Deck problem is how to migrate users from current vector supercomputers to parallel supercomputers. Regan brings up a valid point. Let's call on Wendy Wilhelm, a technical marketing expert from Intel's supercomputer systems division. Wendy, what about the Dusty Deck problem? There's a tool called Forge 90 which we use to solve this problem. It allows you to take a sequential Fortran 77 code and convert it into parallel Fortran 77 code, which utilizes message passing. It's not a panacea, but here, let me show you. I'll start off by selecting a package. I've already created one, so we don't have to do that. Let's go through and analyze the program. I'm going to start with main, and I want to parallelize for distributed memory. Now I'm all ready for Forge 90 to show me what it thinks is the best way to parallelize my code. Then the real work begins, but Forge 90 sounds like a good start. Ease of use is one of the most important things because we'll be doing a lot of code development over the next five years. Wendy, what about people like Ridgeway who are going to be coding from scratch? Either way, you're going to benefit from our mature C and Fortran compilers. One of the things that we want to do is make sure that we can run some of the existing codes that we have. What about those applications people have developed on their IPSC 860s? Our compilers have full NX backward compatibility, which means that at least 99% of the applications that you'll be porting, the porting will be transparent. And you can use these standard compliant compilers on a Paragon system directly, or you can compile on your Sun or Silicon Graphics workstation. Wendy, can you give us an example? Sure. The Dash 03 switch invokes software pipelining, full integration, and loop reorganization.
I think everyone who is in the field of, of supercomputing is interested in performance. These machines are built for speed. I think we're naturally interested in how far that can be pushed uh, given the current technology. So how do you get it to perform and produce the correct results? You can use the Paragon tool set, which utilizes a Motif graphical interface, which is common to all of our tools. This allows you to control your debugging and performance monitoring from a single point of control. One of the very complex issues in massively parallel computing is the issue of debugging. Uh, in understanding how data shifts from one processor to another, you need to utilize specific software tools. The Intel Parallel Debugger, IPD, gives the user a debugger which not only provides the standard sequential-like environment that the programmer is used to, but also the necessary parallel pieces. It allows the user to see more than one node at once. It allows them in parallel to set the context of which nodes to look at. And it provides appropriate data reduction to display what would otherwise be a massive amount of data to the user. Wendy, can you give us an example of how the debugger works? Sure. I've got a simple matrix multiply program right here. Let's take a look. Let's run it and see what happens. It died. We can tell that because of the black nodes and I've no output. This is the traceback window. This lets me know where the program died, which routine, and what line. I'm bringing up a source code window. This allows me to set and remove breakpoints, to go ahead and check out the data values, and to find out which lines are active. Let me check the data value. Here's the problem. I typed T300, and I should have typed T30. What we can do is we can restart our program. We will stop at the breakpoint that I have set and give T300 a valid value. Let's watch it. We really want to know how fast will this machine go. There are several ways to analyze performance with the Enhanced Paragraph Toolset, which allows you to mix and match your analysis to give you the insight that you need. Let's take a look. You're in Motif again. Right. So I grab a chart from Utilization, one from Communication, and usually one on the Trace. Compute takes considerably more time than the Communication. How about if I try turning on one of the optimizing flags on my compiler? This is looking better, but what if I switch to some asynchronous message passing? I now have four times the performance of the original run. Well, Wendy, we only have time for one more. What else can you show us? How about the System Performance Visualizer? The tools I was showing you earlier show you performance bottlenecks at the application level. SPV does the same thing at a system level. So you can watch the activity on the entire supercomputer. Right. The system is displayed as a two-dimensional mesh and shows both communication activity as well as processor utilization. You can zoom in to watch only those nodes and message pathways associated with your application. You can even zoom in to a single node and see the utilization of the processors and other components. Wendy, what about scalability? With the scalability of the Paragon, you can grab one node for a workstation, four or eight for a mainframe, or the whole system for a supercomputer. Well, it'd be great to get some of those extra terminals off of my desk. Future supercomputers will have to support a large number of users as well as big applications. That may not necessarily mean that you want 500 users on that machine, but you want more than five or ten users. We're interested in supporting a multi-user, multi-project environment. Paragon gives you the flexibility to run an interactive job, a batch job, or both. You can do that at the same time? Not only that, you have the flexibility to switch on the fly without affecting users. And this is all done without additional hardware through partition management. 
The importance of single system image is that when the user logs into the Paragon machine, they're presented with a Unix system. Unlike clusters of mainframes or networks of workstations, the user doesn't bother about where the service is in the machine. They don't bother about where the file system is. It's just the file system. They don't bother if they should fork a process that it automatically load balances in the system partition. It's just that it's Unix running faster. So it is Unix. Right. I personally believe in open systems. I think that that type of uh, an approach to in the computer industry is a benefit to uh, to everyone. And OSF1, we think, is really a great idea instead of just staying with a proprietary operating system. Users log directly onto the machine. They see an environment which they're familiar with, just like they see on their workstation or any other Unix machine. The OSF compliant Unix that's available on the machine is crucial to moving from the workstation environment. What I think we in the community are very excited about is with OSF1, we should have a much more robust system. From what Wendy has shown us, you can see that the Paragon is a fully scalable, high-performance supercomputer with some pretty powerful tools. Thanks, Wendy. And thanks to our customers and other partners who have joined us on this journey toward teraflops and who have helped make the Paragon supercomputer truly a product of partnership.